Hey Sam, is this going to become a new thing? And you've already covered my shirt with cat hair. Or hoodie, I should say. Can I have my seat, please? In this case, I'm not concerned with picking you up. After all, I'm not eating anymore. Good evening, Internet. Um, today is April 17th, I think. Hope I'm right. Um, today is April 17th. I wanted to talk with you more about role-playing. Should be the second vlog episode. Um, this will probably not go more than one more, but who knows. Um, as mentioned before, I was talking about role-playing systems. A system, as you may remember, is a set of rules that a person agrees with. Not just a person. A set of rules that multiple people agree with when it comes to role-playing. Um, Fiasco is one such system. Fiasco is a relatively rules light system, that is to say that there aren't too many restrictions as to what you do. Um, Fiasco is a system that does not require a single runner, so there's not a single person running the game, there's not a single person that overrides everything else. It works fairly well for groups that are, well, into more of the social aspects of role-playing. Um, for an example, this is the type of system that I would run if I were to run a game inside of a theater club. I really wish I would have had the system earlier because this is a great way of building character and things like that. Um, this is not, however, the type of system that I would run for a kick in the door dungeon crawl. Um, for those of you that are unaware of the term, the kick in the door dungeon crawl is the idea that you have a group of adventurers that literally kick in doors while they're going through a dungeon to kill crap. Uh, it's a stereotype type of adventure for D&D style systems. Uh, it's definitely not the only type of adventure that you can have with a D&D style system. Don't get me wrong. Stop trolling. Um, but it's a stereotype, and sometimes it can be fun. Not typically my preference, though. Um, as mentioned, this is a relatively small book. I mean, there's not too many pictures, but it's still pretty small, pretty light on rules. Um, Nothing wrong with that, but if you're looking for something that you can figure out exact type of rule for situation B subparagraph alpha, this isn't the system for you. And that's kind of what I was wanting to go over today, is that a single role-playing system is typically not the best for everyone, or even the best for one person. Um, different people have different moods. I totally have a cat-based smudge on my glasses, so I'm going to do the rest of this without my glasses. Uh, different people have different moods. Sometimes you want a thought-provoking adventure that's deep with philosophical meaning and things like that. Sometimes you want a adventure where you are deep into court intrigue, and sometimes you just want to kick in the door and kill some monsters. Uh, for another example of a role-playing system, Pathfinder. Um, this is my Pathfinder book. Notice it's a slightly bigger book. I mean, this is a 8 by 10 size book. Um, it has lots of pictures. At the same time, though, it has 576 pages. And I don't really count advertisements. So 575 pages, complete with full index in the back. Um, I tend to play Pathfinder quite a bit. I've actually never played Fiasco. I really wish I could, but unfortunately, all of my adventuring groups seem to not really be all that interested in Fiasco. Um, I'm thinking they prefer something a little more structured. And Pathfinder is definitely more structured. Uh, Pathfinder is based off of the D20 system, which um, most people would know of as Dungeons & Dragons 3.0 and 3.5 edition. Um, Pathfinder is basically a slightly more balanced version of that. Stop trolling. Yes, you too, as in you're not allowed to troll. So, yeah, Pathfinder is a much more strict system that also, though, means that there's lots more exploits, lots more... Things that don't quite make a bunch of sense because they had to make a set of rules for something that's not necessarily realistic. Um, Role-playing systems are like constitutions. If you try to cover every possible scenario, you're going to end up with a document that's a billion pages long and very confusing, very counterintuitive. Um, on the other hand, if you end up with a very rules-light role-playing system or a very short constitution that's supposed to adapt with the era rather than mentioning everything, Issun, off the table. Off the counter. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, so as I was saying, if you end up with a constitution that's very adaptable with the times, doesn't really mention di things directly, but it's supposed to be interpreted, you end up with a lot of lawyers that interpret things in different manners, and you end up with people that would prefer something to be just set in stone to be just really frustrated by it. Different rules for different people. Um, people that tend to play games like Fiasco, not always the type of people that play games like Pathfinder. Um, in my case, I would love to play a game of Fiasco. I normally play games like Pathfinder. I'm kind of flexible in that regard. I like role-playing. I don't particularly care that much what the system is. And... Yeah. So, other things to deal with when it comes to systems. Sometimes the setting is different. So, back to Pathfinder for a moment. Pathfinder is a standard high fantasy fair setting, by default. Um, you could alter the rules in order to use a more futuristic society, maybe say industrial age or maybe even future. Um, the D20 license, they had D20 modern, D20 future, D20 lots of things. Um, at the same time though, this is meant to replicate more high fantasy. High fantasy, what I mean by that is more swords and fireballs and stuff like that. Um, if you've ever played video game RPG, those are typically high fantasy, not all of them. And you have the fallouts of the world and things like that. Uh, Fiasco is more meant to be a situation type of thing. As they mentioned even on the back cover, it's inspired by films like Fargo. So this is more of a get-together type of thing where everything goes wrong. Um, this is not a high fantasy style system. You don't throw fireballs at people, although you probably could have something like that in Fiasco. Uh, there are systems that are tied to their setting. For an example, um, Shadowrun. Shadowrun is a role-playing system that's based off of a lot of cyberpunk books. Um, for an example, Neuromancer. Uh, Neuromancer is a good book. I highly recommend it, by the way. Um, the Shadowrun system is very tied to its setting. In fact, by default, everybody plays in the same game world. There is meta plot that is controlled by the book rather than the person running the game. It's a very strict sense of a setting. Um, for middle term, Pathfinder doesn't really control the setting that much. I mean, yes, it's meant for high fantasy, but you could probably do what you want. There is a default setting. A lot of people don't tend to use it. I don't. I've never actually played in any book-based setting in my life. It's kind of strange. Uh, Fiasco is not tied to a setting at all. There are sets of rules for different particular scenarios, things like that. You're encouraged to make up your own. Really, though, you can do just about anything. Uh, you have the other extreme, GURPS. Uh, GURPS for generic... What does the U stand for? Generic Universal Role-Playing System, if I remember correctly. Um, GURPS is meant to be, well, a universal role-playing system. It's meant to be a system that is a framework of rules that are supposed to handle any situation. Uh, if you want to decide to run a role-playing game based off of Speed Racer, you could use GURPS. If you want to run a role-playing game based off of Cavemen, you can use GURPS, and there's probably a couple of rules books about it. The downside is that the system is so generic that it doesn't really focus on the strong points of your particular setting. Um, for an example, if you're running a racing-based role-playing system, there's probably not any rules in the game for, say, how you drive race cars, or how you might be able to handle an action sequence along the lines of an action movie, rather than, say, roll a bunch of dice and have a 15-minute long combat. And 15 minutes probably low, but whatever. Um, GURPS is meant to be one of those plug-and-play types of systems where you take the rules that you need for the situation that you're at and run with all of them. It's probably a good example of a rules-heavy universal system. Uh, there are rules lights universal systems. The lightest of all would be little kids role-playing via playing make-believe. There's not really any rules involved. Wow, I have been rambling on quite a bit, haven't I? Um, well, let me to summarize. Lots of different systems. Fiascos of the world, Pathfinders of the world, Dungeons and Dragons of the world, Shadowrun of the world, Werewolf of the world. There's lots of different things going on. Each system is unique. Well, mostly unique. Pathfinder and D&D are very similar to each other. But in any case, um, 
keep doing that. Each system has their own ups, their own downs. Different people will like different systems, different people will like different aspects. If you are the type of person that, for instance, loves to be able to find little exploits and exploit them, you probably want a rules-heavy system. Or alternately, if you are bugged by people that find little exploits and the people that are trying to weasel their way around things, you probably want a rules light system. Um, if you are running a game in a particular setting, you might want to look at, say for instance, rules that make sense for that setting, or ultimately a universal one that more people might actually understand. Am I talking too long, Isun? Isun's saying that I'm talking too long, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off about now. Um, tomorrow I will probably discuss more of how to run a game. Um, it's something I have quite a bit of experience with. I am referred to as a primary DM, that is to say that I run a large number of adventures. I'm not a side DM, somebody that runs a small number of adventures. Um, by DM, I mean Dungeon Master, which is D&D's term. Game Master is a generic term. In any case, enjoy internet.